Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I am going to discuss about one of the algorithm paradigm called dynamic programming. Uh, dynamic programming was introduced by an applied mathematician from New York by name Richard Bellman. Uh, dynamic programming is a method of solving a complex problem by breaking them down into a smaller sub problem and storing the intermediate results. Uh, there is another class of algorithm called greedy algorithm, uh, which actually focuses on <laughs> selecting the best choice uh, at each step. So, let us uh, look at how greedy algorithm works and a dynamic algorithm works in one of the shortest path algorithm. So, the idea here is to find a distance between a source node to the destination node given a weighted graph, where each edge represents a weight. Uh, and it's it actually it's it is actually a distance between one node to to another node. So in this uh, graph, I'm uh, trying to find a shortest path from A to J. Uh, the greedy algorithm selects A to B because that's the shortest, uh, which is having an a, uh, edge weight of two. Then it selects B to F, F to I, and I to J, resulting in a shortest path from A to J being 13. So, now let us look at how dynamic algorithm SAS approaches the problem. So, it defines a function called f of x, where f of x is the minimum distance required to reach a destination node from any node x. So, let us go with the first node which is j itself. So, f of j is 0, uh, next is f of h and f of i. Uh, there is only one edge, so f of h is 3 and f of i is 4. And for f of e, we have two paths, one is from e to h and h to j and from e to i and i, I to j. Uh, but dynamic algorithm selects the minimum out of those two. Uh, in this case, it is e to h and h to j. On the left side, uh, you ha uh, I have optimal substructure. Basically, I am maintaining a knowledge base, which actually says an optimal path from any node to the destination node. Uh, so, likewise I compute for f, j and other nodes. If I look at f of b, so f of b would be minimum of a length from b to e and f of e or b to f and f of f or b to g and f of g. We notice here we are using f of e, f of f and f of g which is already being computed. So, I select one of, uh, I select the best path, so which is f of, which results in f of b being 11. So, likewise we uh, compute for other nodes and uh, thus a shortest path from a to j uh, is from a to d, d to f, f to i and i to j which is of length 11 uh, which is smaller than what greedy algorithm uh, showed us. So, greedy algorithm actually fails in certain cases, uh, but dynamic algorithm uh, systematically searches for all the possibilities and uh, finds an optimal path, uh, thus guaranteeing the correctness. And it, uh, we even saw that it was using uh, the previously computed vo values, so thus um, it has a good efficiency. So, problems which has two properties, one is overlapping sub problems and the other is optimal substructure falls under uh, dynamic programming. So, let us look at how we can solve a recurrence relation or a recursive algorithm using dynamic programming. So, let us look at an interesting problem. So, the question here is how many ways I can reach from Penn Station to Intrepid Museum. So, Manhattan is a grid. Manhattan has avenues going from north to south and uh, the cross streets going from east to west. So, this reminds us of uh, one of the concepts that we learnt in our high school which is binomial coefficient. So, what is binomial coefficient? <laughs> so, what is binomial coefficient? So, binomial coefficient n choose k is the number of ways I pick k outcomes out of n possibilities. Mathematically, it is uh, 
computed using a formula n factorial by n minus k factorial into k factorial. So, if I use this uh, formula in order to solve uh, the previous question on the computer, what will happen? So, this algor uh, this takes huge time because it is a factorial algorithm and the other problem that uh, we could see is n factorial is too huge for certain number. So, I may not be able to store that value inside one variable. So, I may uh, go through an arithmetic overflow. So, how else can we solve this problem? Yeah, food for thought. So, how many ways? Uh, uh, yeah, let's let's see how uh, to solve this problem. So, how many steps I need to take in order to reach from the source to the target? So, if I say there are m streets and there are n avenues, then how I have to take n plus m steps. I have to uh, cross all the streets and I have to walk up all the avenues in order to reach interpret museum. So, how like whichever path I take, I have to walk n plus m steps. So, but the question here is how many ways I can walk uh, to reach the destination. So, there are n steps upward and there are m steps towards right. So, it is n plus m choose n is the total number of uh, paths or total number of ways I can uh, uh, walk to the interpret museum. So, yeah. So, we cannot use the binomial coefficient uh, formula. So, how else can we solve it? We can solve it using Pascal's triangle. So, Pascal's triangle uh, computes the binomial coefficient. So, if I Okay. So, how many ways can I reach this place? I can reach uh, uh, this position in one way. How many ways can I reach this position? I can reach, it, uh, I can take this path that is 1 and or I can take this path that is 2. So, likewise we can, if I have to walk here, uh, there are 3 paths, 1, this is 2 and this is 3. So, so, what am I doing here? In order to compute a value at a particular location, I am actually adding the two previous values that I have already computed. So, so this is uh, essentially a recursive algorithm. So, I am using the previously computed two values in order to find a current value. So, let us look at the recurrence relation for this. So, the recurrence relation would be n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. Why do you think this recurrence work? Say suppose there are n students and I have to choose k students out of those n students and there is an nth student. If I select an nth student, then I am left with n minus 1 possibilities and out of k I have already selected 1. So, I am left with k minus 1 outcomes. So, uh, that uh, that is represent by represented by n minus 1 choose k minus 1. And if I do not include the nth student, then I am left with n minus 1 possibilities, but I have to choose k students. So, so that is why the recurrence works. So, so, now we have a recurrence relation, what else do we need? We need the base case. So, what could be the base case? So, one of the base case would be how many ways can I choose n students out of n students? There is only one way I can choose that is I have to choose all of them. How many ways I, I have to choose 0 students out of n students? Uh, there is only one way which is empty set. Uh, I choose n nobody. So. <laughs> So, uh, we know the recurrence relation, we know the base case, so we are good to go with the program. So, this is how uh, the program looks like. So, initially I have initialized all n choose zeros, which, which is this, the column representing all ones and I have initialized all n choose n to be 1, uh, which is one more base case, which is the diagonal ones and uh, with the recur recurrence relation, I am finding the other values. So, thus we can solve our uh, question how many ways we can reach from Penn Station to Interpeed Museum. So, what did we learn? 
So, the first thing uh, is given a problem formulate the answer using recurrence relation or a recursive algorithm. Show that the pro using the recurrence relation the problem can be solved in a polynomial time and uh, the third step uh, which is for, for computing the current value I should uh, have already computed the previous two previous values which I need. So, these are the three steps that we usually perform while uh, doing a dynamic programming algorithm. So, the quick recap of my talk would be if I use dynamic programming it ensures a polynomial time complexity I can solve a problem which takes exponential or a factorial time uh, and uh, reduce the time complexity to be a polynomial and what kind of a problem does dynamic programming solve it it solves an overlapping sub problem which we saw in Fibonacci and optimal substructure that the example that I gave using the graph and remember the three steps that we spoke about. So, yeah, thank you.